everyone. And if it's Sunday, it's free talk, free talk with Mr. B. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone in Dubai and around the world. So nice to see you all here. How is everyone? Doing well, yeah. Great, Doing great, great, thank you. Thank you. Now, just to remind our audiences, we were talking last week about authenticity in giving back on social media, and we covered a quite a few interesting angles. And I thought today we can talk about what the listener interface, the social media interface, and the interactivity that makes it authentic when we touch uh, our social media and we, when we touch others or give back to them, as it were, in social media. And I wanted us to have this conversation about what do we really think about when we hit like? Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about when you hit like? Are you are you just are you just sort of doing someone a favor or are you just, you know, genuinely showing joy every time you hit somebody's like button? <laughs> Uh, I know from me, from um, my perspective, and Mr. B, I, I put that in the book, The Art of Giving Back, as far mm -hmm. as a form of giving back because of the modernity of things. And I wanted people to, to consider it because it's, it's a nugget, like the way we look at it and the way we yeah. think about it is a nugget. And then I said also from liking, sharing, and commenting to aiding in a piece of information going viral or something like that. Um, mm. the, the pressure of being active online are many, which may at times lead us to compromising our principles without us even being aware of it. So I thought it, it was kind of important mm. to give back authentically. Now, sometimes I feel I'm not being authentic because of, of my um, evaluation process for liking things or loving things or sharing things. And I said to myself, I may not know the person very well, but if it made me pause and look at it, they're worth me touching it saying, I like it. I like it. You know, that is true. That's and so I true. think that That's as true. long as it spreads joy, you know, I mean, when the posts spread joy to other people, I ran across a wonderful post uh, on LinkedIn just a couple of days back. And you, you, you guys might have seen that I reposted it. And I think I accidentally even reposted it a second time. <laughs> it might be on there twice by mistake there <laughs> because I wasn't sure if I had done it successfully the first time, but I wanted to be absolutely sure that it was on there. You know, this wonderful uh, story about a woman who uh, reached 132 years old. She was considered wow. the, you know, one of the wow. oldest people that in the entire world, French lady and it was all about you know in things that she said in interviews about her life about how she you know still considered herself a little girl you know but mm -hmm. she just hasn't looked so good for the last 70 years <laughs> I just love that <laughs> and she thought that she would probably die laughing by laughing so hard you know probably laugh herself to death and she, um, you know, she did she, I mean, not that I'm promoting smoking, so do not think kids I'm promoting smoking, but she even said, you know, she gave up smoking when she was like 60 something only because, um, you know, she didn't want to ask somebody to light her cigarettes anymore because she was losing her sight a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> not because it was bad for her health, you know, <laughs> I think but the impression I got was that she ate life you know she lived I mean like authentically lived and I think to hear someone's story like that makes people feel good and hopeful in a very dodgy world right now so yeah. if you're doing something like that anything you know that makes people smile or feel happy or laugh a little bit or feel inspired I think you're doing a good deed that's not nothing you know, it does count, right? Yeah. And Absolutely. Sister Mia, I'm not sure if you met um, Lene. Am I saying you're pronouncing your name properly? Yes, yes, you are. 
Okay, and so please, um, Sister Mia from South Africa is online with us and our guest, uh, May, who um, was on our program last week with the You, Me and Ice Tea podcast. And oh, we plan yeah, to have her on again yes. today too, yeah. yeah. And so the whole idea is we- have been we on have... this one yet. <laughs> <laughs> we like a variety of viewpoints because I encourage people to smile at other people as a form of giving back. I encourage people to say a greetings and good morning as a way of giving back. And I also encourage them to hold the door open as they go through, whether someone's coming or not, hold the door open, check for them as a way of giving back. But because we have social media or we may be at home, like we were speaking about before we came on being locked down at home for a while, we can give back a very generous thing by saying, I like or hitting like. You don't have to like it in a deep emotional sense, but hitting like says you gave the person uh, a consideration like a smile or a hello or something as simple as as giving back. Lene? I I used to hand out likes as if it was candy at Halloween and uh, got blocked by Facebook a few times over the years because I've been on it since 2008. It, it was an amazing way to meet up with other artists and writers all over the world back then. So I've known people on Facebook since before when we were on the old uh, Yahoo forums. And some of my friends have been online with me for more than 20 years, even though we'll probably never meet in real life. <laughs> and even just a like is an acknowledgement that you've seen what they've shared. Yes. But yes, yes. what Facebook did during the pandemic was releasing the care button, which made it more comfortable for me to acknowledge a post. Because if someone is saying that they're sharing their pain, you don't want to say, I like your pain. So the care button is a bit more of an empathetic, here's a virtual hug. Um, I see you because so many people felt unseen during that time. And I've made it a personal uh, uh, mission of mine for many years now. I share funny memes and funny earworms. And then because I'm a paralegal, I add disclaimers. And there's terms and conditions to these earworms. So I sometimes give them free brownie points or, you know, (laughs) fake goodie bonuses, terms and conditions apply. Um, And I like to make people smile and laugh on social media because washing your dirty laundry on social media is usually a cry for help. But then it creates the wrong sort of attention. So in a Mm -hmm. sense, care button says, I see your pain, but I'm not indulging it. I will rather go and like some of your more positive posts. But here's a funny one from me. So let's bring a smile to your face because it's the only way we have of communicating with so many of our friends overseas. So I really like that they adapted to that level. And, and Sister Mia, what would you what would you be encouraged to share? Because sometimes you see something and it motivates us to share. What would you share? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is when we hit that like button, how many of us are actually reading the full post before we stick like? Um, and that's because lots of people tend to press the like button purely because they see where or who the person is that's sending something. Um, So if it's a long post, most of the time, you're not really getting somebody who reads the full thing to put a comment in, so it's just a like. The other thing about the like buttons that I found is um, I had a client, for example, who had an issue because she kept on going to view how many people would like her post. And if somebody, if she didn't get so many people liking it, she'd actually become despondent. She she actually, really, she, she would. She'd be like, I put this up. Why did so many people not even say hello or like it? And we're like, why did you put it up? Did you put it up for yourself or did you put it up for other people? So, um, yeah, those are just questions that I'll I'll leave out there. But in terms of what I'd share is um, something like what Deirdre has spoken about, something that is optimistic, something that gives hope. I want to clear out one thing because I say the word share. And I think I did I mean repost or or well, that's I mean, kind of the same thing. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to yeah. make sure because sometimes I use a word and I'm not sure if I made it clear. <laughs> share, we can share things that we didn't repost. We can share it from ourselves or, or elsewhere. But I meant to like reshare or, or reposts. Right. Well, I, w- I would look at something that is obviously motivational, something that I find hits my core button um, that mm-hmm. I find made the difference with me. So I yeah. always, I always teach what, what works for me first. Um, and if something is something that really triggers something in me that's positive, 
that I, I found is excellent and is, is hit the right button with me, I think this is going to hit somebody else's button, then that's what I would reshare. Uh, I, right. would, I would I, really want to reverse that. <laughs> I, I think, um, I'm, don't take this wrong, I think Deidre's posts in TikTok and elsewhere are amazing. I love them <laughs> a lot. And when I say don't take them, I'm you. trying to blow, you, blow your mind. And pump it. It's something about them, just the way she does it. It must have an Alfred Hitchcock kind of approach to it. And he really gets to the point or something like that. But um, or uh, if you oh, saw that's the very, work of Steve, I take that as high praise. Thank you. If you saw the, the <laughs> early work of Steven Spielberg and so on, I mean, there and as far mm. as videography and 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 really reaching the audience, somehow it just really gets to me. I'm not sure if everyone feels that way. It was like, wow. Look at this. <laughs> how do you? Thank you so much. You, how do you do it, and what are you trying to tell your audiences? I mean. You're so well, to the point. What else are you trying to tell us? Well, just different, you know, every week or so, every time I post, it's a different sort of motivation behind it. Sometimes it's to promote these podcasts, you know, to kind of get the subject out there, you know, before we talk about it, um, you know, and uh, lately it's been a lot for you, me and Ice-T, you know, so that I can promote that po that podcast and the topics. But it's also just to make people think about it because I, I, I believe they're meaningful topics. And I think that it's nice to get people excited about the issue, you know, like today, for example, we're talking about autism, you know, and it's very important to put some things out there like, hey, did you realize that autism affects more people. Right there, she's doing cancer, it. Cancer, AIDS, doing it. and doing diabetes it. combined. She's doing it. <laughs> she's doing it. Exactly. <laughs> it's just the way you do it, and it, it seems so authentic. <laughs> it's authentic, it's real. It is. It's very heartwarming it the way it comes up. Um, I, do, I do reels. I make my own reels for when it's Sunday. And I make them in different places, different stages, different visitations, different countries. And every opportunity, I say, oh, this, this is a chance to do a win. It's, if it's Sunday. And of course, I put my I like radio voice They're on. And so on. <laughs> <laughs> but I want, I, I want to, um, I always want to be authentic. Lena, what do you think about those kind of approaches? I think it's, it's important to remain consistent. Um, people tend to want to have a bit of escapism when following real people. So unless you're really out for going all in with drama and tears and fakery, the only other hook that they have is that you are consistent. So in that sense, you tend to fulfill an emotional role that they are missing in their lives. And mm. whether it's as a sibling, an aunt, or a, a supportive child, or just an ear, you know, um, and the way people fixate on characters in movies, for example, they think the characters are real. And the human actors who portray these characters sometimes get slapped in the street. We've all seen and heard reports of that. So in that sense, our personas online are a, an important part of our identity. They don't know us in real life. And that's the only face facet of ourselves that they see. Yeah. So I say consistency is important and speaking from the heart. And I've learned to sort of just delete, <laughs> rewrite, yeah. delete five or six <laughs> times and then delete the post <laughs> entirely because it's not something I want to see come up on my memories a year from now. But <laughs> on that note as well, what Facebook has done with their memory function is if I see a post from 10 years ago or 12 years ago, the content is sometimes missing because the original account has deleted it or they've shifted it to a different location. So what I've learned is now, if I share something that's really important to me and I like the way they said it, or it's a funny meme, I download and then I upload the link myself. That way the content is preserved as a bit of a time capsule. And I will sometimes go back and reshare something from five years ago, just because something new has happened and then I can build on the story. So right. then I look forward to what happens again, two, three years later, if the same memory and it's reshare pops up. So it becomes like a mini serial. 
And some of my friends from over the years have been following some of the dramas, like the time I dropped the glitter down three flights of stairs in my house. And um, <laughs> yes, we have the glitter bomb anniversary every year. And we all laugh about it again. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I, think, I think consistency is the key. And Sister Maureen, if you think about it from a giving back perspective and, and how do we c combine this authenticity and giving back, what do you think you really, I mean, and we're putting you, or we're going to put all of us on the spot. What do we really give back while trying to be authentic on social media? To be quite honest, if you're going to give back you, that is authentic enough, as long as it's your true self. So if I'm mm -hmm. going to write out my own post, which is going to be a storyline or something that I want to give back, my giving back is based on a lesson I'm trying to give to somebody based on what yeah. I have learned that's happened to me. So it's not what I'm going to copy from somebody else that I'm going to put up there. I'm going to put what is authentic about me. That is the authenticity. The authentic. Mm -hmm. That is the authentic being of me sharing what I have just endured, what I've just gone through, what I want somebody else to learn from. And that is the giving back because I don't know actually who's going to get this. I don't know who this exactly. is going to read. I, I do don't that know who's too. going to be it. Yes. But mm. the point is, if I reach one person and that one person has that significant mm. change being made to them because of what I've just shared, because of me and my authenticity, then yay. I think I've done it. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, that's the whole idea. Yeah. Is you, you need to just be authentic with you and what you are posting. Okay. That is why I say what I share, for example, from somebody else is obviously what hit me first. So what I'm going to type out to post as well has got to be what I have and I know is authentic about me. Because remember, you don't know who's also going to come up with a comment with a question um, about what you've just said. And if it's not your your authentic being and your, your authentic writing or something that you've really experienced, how are you supposed to answer that? Yeah. So um, you you got to really be authentic in what you're putting up there because you want to hit the right people. You want yeah. the audience to get motivated by what you are saying. And you never know who's really looking for that small bit of inspiration from what you're putting up. Yeah. We're trying exactly. to hit women. We're trying to get... We're trying to get a child or a youth. You don't know. Kids are opening up Facebook accounts with fake um, dates of birth. Just and you know, so you don't know who's actually reading your stuff. Be careful. Um, but you do want to make that significant difference and give back. And that was that's what the whole idea is. The art of giving back is the art of your <laughs> and, and, and Deidre always have an interesting perspective, but I want to ask you, um, Deidre. Um, are there any risks to your personal life as you try to be authentic in your social media life? Are there any risks that you may be exposing something you don't want to, or, mm -hmm. or even your business life in your writing and, and movie productions and so on? Are there any risks in being in trying to be authentic? Well, yeah, I suppose there are some risks. I mean, um, I mean, in terms of storylines and things, I never expose what I'm actually actually working on, so I keep that very private. I uh, what you see online is most definitely not all there is of Deidre Stevenson. <laughs> I mean, people who know me in real life can attest to that fact that my image on social media is a very carefully crafted one, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is a very it is. Um, the, the the it has been sort of sourced and 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 um, what's the word when you're cur curated? It's curated. It's all curated images, you know, that I want to put out there. Not that they're not authentic; they are. There are sides of me that are very fine to be public, but there's a much deeper. I mean, what you see is maybe the tip of the mountain, and then there's like a whole depth there <laughs> <laughs> that is completely private. <laughs> so if I'm putting it out there, it's because I chose to, and I, and it's completely not dangerous to put it out there. But I do take some risks sometimes of people seeing me as maybe a you know an emotionally vulnerable person which I mean sometimes we all are you know but like you said Professor Mia sometimes I put maybe something a little personal out there because I feel like maybe it would help somebody else 
you know, to mm -hmm. know that they are the, not the only ones who's ever gone mm -hmm. through something yeah. like that, you know, a relationship problem, you know, a problem with your marriage, a problem with your children, you know, relating mm -hmm. to friends or even people who have become sort of frenemies, you know, yeah. <laughs> they've gone from cool. friends to frenemies. I mean, it can make somebody say, yeah, oh my God. Yeah, me too. Oh man, you know, look at Deidre, you know, going through that. And, you know, I put that picture of the uh the lioness walking, you know, is my story on Facebook. You, know, you you have the option to put up your little video story. And I just thought it was a really cool meme, you know, the lioness walking, like, you don't know how much ass I've had to kick, you know, to get to be this tough. You know, so don't you think for one second you can beat me down, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's not going to happen. Not in, not today. <laughs> yeah. You know, you never well, know just, what, um, oh, there's a woman there. out there who might have wanted to, needed to see that, you know, yes, she was feeling right. weak and needed the strength that that lioness would, you know. This, would and the same kind of question to Lene, because, um, on social media, people think we're faking so many things. And uh, and do you have to like hide some of the reality so that you're not um, overexposed? Because sometimes we feel like if we're overexposed, everyone might think we're rich or well-to-do and start asking us for things and you don't want to be bothered by that. <laughs> no, I know that one. You know, I, I don't, don't have any gold-plated Ferraris at home, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, though, I mean, I, because we don't put all of our negativity online, everyone thinks things, yeah. Deidre was saying, they think things are going so well, they will take the risk of asking us for help when we might be the ones ourselves who need some encouraging. We need help. help. <laughs> you know, but I wanted your well, perspective on that one anyway. Um, I, I made a point since my children were quite small to avoid putting them on social media. So a lot of my family stuff is not online at all. And um, years and years and years ago, many before, I think before even 2010 or 2011, um, I, I had some friends drama on Facebook with people exposing too much of themselves and literally having a breakdown on social media. And it, it became a mud fest. It was, it was unpleasant. People started blocking and deleting each other. Um, so I learned my lesson early on before Facebook became the monster it is today. And uh, it, it was a case of I decided to only focus on positive stuff. I, If I have some updates or something I've been working on, I'm not a fan of taking selfies and putting them on social media. I will share a picture of the work I've been doing or my artwork or my mishaps, you know. And um, what I also tend to focus on is trying to help other people when they ask a question. No matter which groups I'm in, whether it's my friend group or any of the networking groups or, or artist groups, if someone has a question and if I can help them, I will put a suggestion there. I don't believe in gatekeeping information or treating it as superior wisdom that they have to pay for. And sometimes people don't know a lot about certain fields. For example, I'm a paralegal. So if they ask a simple legal question, yes, we have lawyers who will charge you a few thousand dirhams for 20 minutes of their time. And I feel that that is absolutely not acceptable because in South Africa, where I come from, you can have a discovery call for free before you decide to go with a certain law firm. Absolutely. So in that sense, I, I will give people the basic legal advice and tell them this is easy enough to research yourself, that you need a lawyer for, the following you can find on that website. And in that sense, I've built up over the years quite a lot of people who trust what I say because I don't sell anything. I don't lie to them. Um, I come from a, I have the information, I'm helping you, but you're on your own to make your choices. So in that sense, the comments are just as important as the original posts, I feel. Yes, and, and I brought it up because um, the way I look on on social media I try to be as authentic as possible. Of course, someone has asked me, did I really look like this in real? I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is what I look <laughs> like in real. Uh, and then I tell my age and they don't always believe me. I, as I go to, through changes in things I'm experiencing or things I take on, I start slowly sharing it, but I try to make it real. 
I don't always post where I am at the moment I'm there. I tend to post after I leave, you know, because sometimes our security, our safety is important. We can post things after we get to our next location before we tell them where we are. Like this program, um, I'm not in the Philippines at this time. I'm home, but I am um, in the Philippines. I was working. I am working on as this sponsorship of this <laughs> program, which is being sponsored by I Franchise. BS Service Corp. And it's what I'm working on now about establishing franchises globally. And this company comes, I franchise comes from the Philippines. And so it's such a nice thing to start sharing online. So everyone would know that's what I'm concentrating on without dropping my podcasting, without stopping being retired and so on. But no matter what I do, it tends to encourage some people from around the world that knows my level of giving back and they misunderstand what it is. It's not a charity program, but it's an encouragement, motivational program. And so whatever I do, I try to, to let them know, no, I am not in the business of um, feeding people. That's a local issue, as Sister Marine will know. And so someone who isn't in one location may concentrate on giving back at their location while encouraging each other or each person to give back in their own location. So I make it quite clear that I'm not in the business of trying to send money all over the world. That is not what we do. You know, even if we even if we look great online, I'm, <laughs> I'm inside my virtual studio. <laughs> so it was something that's online, and and I still have to live like a normal human. So, uh, but please, yes, let's let's get final comments. I really appreciate this whole conversation. It turned out exactly the way I I wanted it to be. So nice, <laughs> Idra. Well, um, you know, I think. Generally speaking, I think we've hit all the highlights, like you said, of the, the wonderful things that we can accomplish through social media and giving back positivity and, you know, encouragement, motivation, and being, you know, like you said, our authentic selves. A little word of caution, though. I mean, it, I did have an afterthought after the previous question you asked me about exposing you know, yourself in too, too many ways, and even maybe to danger, you know, there are some creepy, you know, uh, um, users out there. <laughs> so sometimes it may be necessary to turn off, you know, the ability to comment, you know, on some content that you put out there, because it can be distorted. I've had to do that, you know, before, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think it, you know, it uh, takes away from it at all. It just sort of removes the ability for anyone to tarnish it. You know, I mean, that's just what I, I believe about it. <laughs> well, we really appreciate everyone being on this program. And we look forward to the next episode of Yumi and Ice-T coming up next. And so we look forward to thinking about Sundays because when it's Sunday, it's free talk. Free talk with Mr. B right here online as much as we can keep up with it. Thank you so much, everyone. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I look forward to Thank seeing you guys you. soon from South sure. Africa, from Dubai, from Houston, and around the world. Thank you.